So moving on to the next slide. This has been my take since day one on what on earth is happening. And I will reiterate it. And it is true. It doesn't make a difference whether you don't accept it. It doesn't make a difference whether you don't believe it. It is true regardless. Okay. The concept of religion and what it actually means, not what you currently think it means for those who may be new listening to, to the broadcast. Okay. Again, part of what I show here on what on earth is happening is you have to understand what the presenter means by the topic that they are discussing, not hearing a word and triggering your own pre-existing internal definition that exists already in your mind of the word, because there is a larger context in which, which matters with everything. Context matters with everything. Okay. The larger context that I am using the word religion to help people to understand what it really represents. Okay. So you have to get your internalized mental definition out of your brain that you've been handed, that has been handed to you and has been regurgitated to you since the day you were born and understand I am using religion in a much wider sense as a word, as a constructural mental concept to convey meaning to someone than what you may understand religion to be or what your dictionary definition that you have floating around already pre-existing in your mind tells you that it is. So I call religion the one and only problem of this world. Okay. The word religion does in fact come from the Latin verb religare. There are people who insist that this isn't the case. And I'm telling you, this is the etymological definitive etymological place origin of the word religion. It comes from the Latin verb religare. Religare in Latin literally means to bind, to hold back by tying, to thwart from forward progress. All you have to do is go to a Latin dictionary online, a Latin to English translation site, or pick up a rudimentary, like a uh, high school level, freshman or sophomore level Latin reader and go into the vocabulary of the Latin reader and look up the word, the word religare. It is a verb. That's the infinitive form. Okay. Religio religare. Okay. And it means to bind, to hold back or to thwart from forward progress. Religion, as I am using the term, is a system of sociological control. It's a control mechanism based in, there's three qualities of something that, that makes something a religious belief. Okay. The belief is unchallenged. It is erroneous, meaning it is false. And it is dogmatic, meaning it is rigidly held to, and it can be largely unchallenged or completely unchallenged, but basically it is pretty much accepted on blind faith. So it is based in unchallenged, erroneous, and dogmatic belief, not knowledge, which is provable through scientific methodology, but a belief system which is specifically designed to hold back the progress of human consciousness. The term religion, as I am using it here, does not merely refer to the belief systems of what I call and many others refer to as the cultural religions of the world. Okay. For example, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Taoism, Hinduism, etc., so forth and so on, ad infinitum, and all the different flavors and variants that they exist in throughout the world. These are what I refer to as the cultural religions or the world religions, the cultural religions of the world. However, you want to look at that term, however, you want to express it, these are cultural belief systems, okay, that are often about God, about creation, about human origins, about morality, uh, you know, etc. Okay. But they are beliefs. They are not ultimately based in knowledge. Often they work through parables that teach people some uh, rudimentary moral lessons, but you're not really getting to the heart of science of true knowledge. When you, uh, just believe in, uh, largely unchallenged, almost always, or partially erroneous beliefs and dogmatic beliefs. 
which people just take on faith and stay rigidly clinging to. Okay. What on earth is happening has never been about clinging to any rigid beliefs. It's about understanding factually what is taking place and what is going on in the world. Okay. And what is taking place in nature. Okay. So people will say, well, it, it, it's a belief to believe in something like, uh, gravitation or electromagnetism. No, it isn't because it has an observable effect in the world. And that's why people say, oh, it's some sort of a religious belief to believe that natural law exists. No, it requires no belief because it has a natural observable effect in the world as we're going to talk about. And that's what sets it apart. And it's not a religion. It's actually a science and it is knowable. Just like the dynamics of motion are knowable through scientific laws. The dynamics of the consequences of behavior are also knowable and thus com comprise a science of morality. So religion in a wider sense must be recognized as an active form of mind control placed into human society by social engineers. Religion in this wider view of the term includes an array of limiting and controlling belief systems or social structures such as authority, government, money, mainstream media, uh, scientism, which we'll talk a lot about, materialism, solipsism, carnism, nihilism, escapism, hedonism, atheism, and many, many more. We could do a hundred shows on religious beliefs and never touch on Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Islam, etc. We would never need to bring the cultural religions into the picture. I could do a hundred shows on religious beliefs and never talk about the cultural religions once. That's how many religions are out there in the world, folks. If you understand religion in this context and stop insisting that it's just your limited mental definition of the term. Okay. So all forms of religion, not just some, but all forms of religion are what put the human mind in a cage and keep it there. I refer to this graphic on the right in this slide as the head cage or the brain cage or the mind cage. And that's what this is all about. It's, it's very interesting that this show is number 203. Okay. Symbolically, occultically in occult numerology, when we break that down, it's 23. The zero doesn't add any value. So it's, it's equivalent to 23 in the thalamic system of occultism. Numerologically, the number 23 means getting out of mind control. That is literally what the number 23 means. Okay. To get out of the limiting and controlling belief systems that have held back your consciousness. And that is very synchro mystic. If you ask me, I did not wor work at this, this way. This was my intended topic. And I didn't even realize that until like yesterday. Okay. It's very interesting how things just work out like that. Uh, almost uh, magically, if you will. Okay. So what we have to understand religion as ultimately is nothing more than forms, different forms of mind control. That's all they ever have been. That's all, all they are now, and that's all they ever will be. Okay. So you could replace the word religion in the top sentence as the one and only problem that mind control is the one and only problem because religion is mind control. Just like government is slavery. Well, all forms of religion are forms of mind control. So I don't know how much more simplified and repetitive and babyish. I need to take this down to a level of, I don't know how much more simplified I can break it down in little baby spoon fed bites to the listening audience. I, you know, there are people who say to me, Mark, I can't stand how much you repeat. I can't stand how much you, you're, you, you just go over the, the same things, but it's like, then other people are like, I can't even understand a word that you are saying to me. So you have to tread this medium of saying things over and over. So those who are a little slow on the uptake can get it. Okay. Versus potentially boring people who are very quick on the uptake and they have a sharp mind and they can get it with the first time it's said. I err on the side of, I'm going to keep repeating it. 
I'm going to hammer it into the, into the minds of the people that are out there to the extent that I am capable because there is, a, I think more people than not are slower on the uptake. And that's because of a lot of vaccine damage that maybe they've, they've undergone that fogs the mind and, and, you know, affects the body in many different ways, but it also has a, an effect on the mind. Plus all the toxins that are in our environment. These are all forms of controlling the mind and limiting it and slowing it down. Okay. We have to understand as I'm talking about it here, you cannot tell me one human problem that is not based in mind control, that is not based in wrong thinking. Wrong thinking is the basis of every single human problem, and that follows the law of mentalism of natural law. Everything is ultimately stems from and is created from a mental construct, even the universe itself. Okay? So everything has to come eventually from mind as a causation, as a causal factor. Then it comes down into the realm of manifestation once it has existed in mind. So every single human problem first existed in the human mind before it became a manifested reality in the 3D world in which we live and share. That's why religion has to be destroyed. All forms of it. Every single form of religion, humanity will not be free until every form of religion, including atheism, is destroyed. And we know the truth because only knowledge will set us free, ladies and gentlemen. There's no savior coming to rescue us from our own fucking stupidity. You think that? You are a baby. A baby in your mindset. No saviors coming to rescue us and no blue avians are coming to rescue us either for your other group of fucking babies. Okay. Cause that's what you are who believe this nonsense peddled to you by people in that whole fucking community of, of the, the, the ET saviors are coming any day. Now they're just having a problem with the warp drive. They're getting it fixed. Their, their engineers are working on it as we speak. They'll be here any minute. Fucking little dunce children believe this shit. Okay. And here's why this is the reason people fall for religion. This is the pe reason people fall for any form of mind control that they fall for. It's why they don't understand reality. It's why they don't understand what's taking place around them and within them. It's why they've remained mental children, their whole damn lives. Okay. And this is a piece of cake for people who understand it to manipulate people in this in either one of these conditions. Okay. Our social engineers, the masters of this world, the dark occultists of this world who are manipulating the events from behind the scenes. It's a, you're a joke to them. Humanity is a fucking joke to these people. Okay. They are, they have people on strings and are making them dance like dunce puppets that they are. Because that's how easy it is to manipulate people in a state of brain imbalance. Okay. Getting them to believe the nonsense that they put on TV, getting them to believe all these nonsense, false flag events. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, getting them to lay down their rights whenever they're told. Okay. It's a piece of cake for these social engineers to do because of the ignorance. I'm going to term, I'm going to coin a new term. I don't know if it's, it's out there in the cultural lexicon yet, but if, I haven't heard of it. So I'm going to coin the new term. Okay. The ignorati. Okay. That's what the vast majority of the human race is. The ignorati. You, you've been, you've been christened as belonging to a new secret society. It's not the Illuminati, the illuminated ones, the enlightened ones. No, it's the ignorati. Okay. The ignorant ones. That's what I'm going to start calling people instead of the dead, the sheep, the sheeple, you know, uh, the ignorati is what the people of this world really are. Okay. Uh, the ignorant ones. There's your new, uh, very own custom made secret society. Okay. And it, you know, it, it would be funny if it weren't so damn sad because that's what it really is. It's really sad. It's a sad joke is what it is. Okay. And here's why the puppet masters can continue to make the puppets dance on their strings because people almost invariably are in one form of chronic brain imbalance in the neurochemistry of the human brain in one form of brain imbalance or another. So chronic left brain dominance. This is when someone 
is too rigid of a left brain egghead. Okay. And we all know people like this. We all know them, right? We all know people. They're the ultra skeptics. Nothing is true. Uh, you, no, no one can ever really truly know anything, you know, the jackasses that think like this. I mean, imagine this, there's no such thing, you know, and it's all, it's almost like they've gone so left brain that they're a fully right brain imbalanced. And that's how a lot of these forms of imbalance work. You know, how, how many people know the sick religionist that is like a control freak because they've gone so far in a right brain imbalance, their whole fucking brain becomes imbalanced and they come around the left brain tendencies. It's the same thing when it comes to left brain imbalance. So some people are such rigid skeptics that then they go into solipsism. Okay. And they think nothing can be true because no evidence is good enough for them. No matter how much is presented. Rigid skeptics, the eggheads. Okay. Scientism worshipers, those who worship at the altar of scientism, which we're going to talk about what that is, what scientism is and what it means. Okay. Not real science, not genuine science, but scientism, a religion, atheism, the religion that we're talking about here today. Okay. This is a hallmark of chronic left brain dominance. People who believe that there is no spiritual dimension, that there is no consciousness. They'll say consciousness is just electrochemical signals in the physical brain. Science has proven that inaccurate. We're going to talk about how much science has proven inaccurate in the Newtonian model in the, uh, completely, uh, 100% scientifically disproven, outdated Newtonian materialistic paradigm of science. You are clinging to the dead corpse of 150 year old disproven science, minimum of a hundred year old disproven, completely disproven. And that, and that, that's people who think they're up to date with scientific developments. They think they're up to date. They don't read any new science that comes out. They're reading things from textbooks that were printed 75 fucking years ago and think that this is still accurate, you know, or what they learned in school when they were just a little chump, you know, and they actually believe that what they, their teachers told them. And in the textbook that the Rockefeller foundation published, you know, that somehow that's accurate science. That's accurate, cutting edge, modern science. You it's like, it's like, it's like someone who says, I just got the latest telephone, you know, and they bring out one of the old, you know, models, forget the rotary ones that that would be way too new. They bring out the old ones that are like they're mounted, mounted on the wall. And it has the mouthpiece that you talk into and you got to hold the earpiece up like that. And there's a crank on the side, you know, that, that, that's what they think is the latest telephone model, you know? Forget the latest iPhone or Android model. That's what they're working with. And this is exactly what they're working with regarding science. And they think they're up to date on science and they're using a completely outdated and disproven uh, paradigm as their basis for understanding. And then they consider themselves scientific. You got to be absolutely fucking joking me. Okay. But unfortunately, no, these people are actually serious. Okay. And think that they know. See, the problem is it's shallow depth of knowledge, not drinking deeply enough from the Pyrrhian spring of knowledge. Okay. They want to take the shallow little sips, you know, like a little girl at a tea party, the dainty little sips of knowledge, and then put it down, never go back to it again and say, I know everything there is to fucking know. You don't know anything, little boy, little girl, nothing. Cause you don't do the real work. You don't do, you're too lazy. You don't really look into it deeply because that takes too much time and effort. And you want to believe what you want to believe. You want to stay there. And, I, and ultimately this is about, I'm not trying to change anybody folks. I'm here to witness truth. That's it. I'm here to put truth out into the world. That's my job. That's what I'm tasked to do. Okay. It's someone else's karma, whether they want to stay on the path of Satanism and disinformation and wrong information and then do harm as a result. That's their karma. That has nothing to do with me. Okay. I'm fulfilling my dharma and my karma by putting the word out, by speaking the truth out there into the world. Okay. And then I've done my piece. Then it's up to other people and what they do with it is on them. It's not on me. Okay. That having been said, this rigid left brain, chronic left brain and do, uh, dominance will then lead to 
even solipsism. And again, this is from the rigid skepticism approach that is so rigid and so believing that nothing really ultimately constitutes proof of anything that they go into the religion known as solipsism, which is the religion that there is no such thing as truth, that there is only perceptions and that there is no actual objective truth, no objective knowledge. I, I have people saying there's no such thing as knowledge. I hear this on, on social media. No, no, no such thing as knowledge. Nothing can be known. You can't know anything, you know, Imagine this, imagine, and they think they're going to be free. They think they're going to be free. Folks, knowledge is the only path to freedom. There is no other path to freedom except through knowledge. Get it out of your head. If you think otherwise, you want to think path to actual freedom is believing in something or believing in someone. Okay. These religious mindsets will put you in a fucking trap and keep your soul in that trap. They'll keep your mind in that trap and they'll keep your soul in that trap because that's what they're designed to do. That's exactly what they're designed to do. And atheism is no different. Atheism is the exact same trap. Just another religion, just like solipsism is. Okay. So solipsism, the religion uh, uh, that espouses the belief that there is no such thing as truth and everything is just a perception. Moral relativism is what left brain imbalance will lead to because if there is no such thing as knowledge, well, there's no, and there's no such thing as objective reality and objective truth, then, Hey, how could there be objective real, uh, 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 objective morality? Well, obviously there can't be. So these are, see th this mindset, this left brain imbalance leads to the belief it's all perception and therefore human beings get to make it up what morality is. It doesn't exist in nature. It's not something that we have to align our perceptions to because it exists objectively and independently of us. No, no, no. We get to make up what right and wrong are and then we could change it. We could change it any time we want. We could change it at any location we want, you know? This is the jackass mindset of people in this left brain chronic, uh, left brain dominance form of brain imbalance. This is how fucked up their mind is. Okay. And it, it's just amazing. It's amazing that it's the year 2019 with all of the scientific knowledge and discoveries that we have made regarding consciousness and regarding actual spirituality. That we're still at this dark age. We're still in the dark ages when it comes to this dynamic. Because there's a gap in science. See, all these left brain eggheads think they're up to date on science. There, there, there's a scientific knowledge gap that takes place in time. And it's growing and growing and growing and growing. If you don't understand this dynamic, you better look it up and research it. When tr new actual scientific discoveries happen in the scientific community, it's now taking longer and longer and longer a period of time to get that understanding out into the public sphere at all. And then even once it does emerge into the public consciousness, it takes so much longer for the public to really understand how that dynamic scientifically works. So you, you have to, you have to realize you're dealing with two time lag chasms from the time an actual scientific discovery is made. You're, you're, you're going to the time lag when it actually gets published out to the community in any kind of a wide way where people are even taking notice of it at all. Then there's another time lag from the time it gets published into the wider public community and the time that it's actually understood by dumb people. You know, till they can rewire their brains enough to accept, yes, this is actually how it does really work. You know, so that, that's the kind of time lags we're fighting. So going back to the slides, you know, moral relativism is one of the hallmarks of Satanism. Satanism is a religion that comes about through extreme chronic left brain dominance and imbalance. And moral relativism will lead to social Darwinism because they'll say, well, hey, since human beings, there's no other higher power in the universe. And this is how atheists and most uh, left brained eggheads and rigid uh, scientism believers think. OK, since uh, there's no higher power than human beings, well, we get to make up what right and wrong are. Why shouldn't human beings form a social pecking order that, that is like the animal kingdom? See, it all comes down to when you're in this form of left brain imbalance, you think the rules of the 
animal, the lower animal kingdom should be applied to human beings behavior. And I see this over and over. I see jackasses arguing online saying, oh, well, the lion just devours the, the, the gazelle on the plains because it takes what it needs. So why shouldn't human beings act like that? Why shouldn't we just do whatever any other animals do? Because we're not fucking animals. That's why. We're not just animals. We have an animalistic component, but then we are, have a higher thought component, which are neocortical brain is supposed to make possible. But most people aren't using it. They're not using either hemisphere of the brain. They're certainly not using them well. I'll tell you that much. You know, so because they, they think we're no different than other animals, you hear this all the time. Human beings are not set apart from the animal kingdom. No, no, we're not set apart from the animal kingdom, right? Because animals can do all the things that we can, you know? They can form multiple languages. They have higher level mathematics and creativity and art. Yeah, yeah, right. There's no difference. I mean, people don't even understand what dumb bags of shit they sound like when they talk. They really don't. They don't. They don't understand how ignorant they sound. They, they really should videotape their voice and go back and listen to how dumb they sound. Okay? You know, I go back and listen to old shows that I do and I go, Wow. Unbelievable job. Nobody else is doing this. And I'm horrified. It isn't like I want to take pride in it. I don't want to take pride in it. I'm horrified that so few people are even doing anything like this. There's like a handful of people that are doing this, this type of work effectively. But most people, it's the exact opposite. They open their mouth and a liquid stream of diarrhea comes blurting out of it. You know, they should videotape themselves and go back and watch it and hear what they sound like because they don't even understand how dumb they sound when they talk. Yeah, we're no different than other animals. I mean, please. And then, of course, you know, in the satanic mindset, moral relativism will lead to social Darwinism. You know, that we should just act like other animals and have a uh, a dog-eat-dog uh, -dog mentality. You know, a bestial uh, those with the sharp, sharpest teeth and claws with the most ravening, vicious attitude will come out victorious and emerge on top of the, of the human herd. You know? Yeah, that'll get you a great world. Yeah. It's a, a wonderful place you'll be fucking living in. Yeah. Oh, we're already living in that place because of this mindset. I forgot. That's where we already are at. See? Yeah. That's what wrong thinking has gotten us. This is the state it has gotten us to. And then you just take that out to the final solution and it's called eugenics. Authoritarianism, totalitarianism, and eugenics. Which means some people are going to decide who's allowed to live and who must die. And that's the height of the satanic ideology. That's the height of what these Satanists, these dark occultists, want to put into the world. That's where they want to get the human population to accept. They want to get us to that place of acceptance. Then on the other side of mind control, and again, I call these the psychological schism. I call this the psychological schism. This is where our species is at in one form of chronic brain imbalance or another. I call this the prelude to divide and conquer. Once you're in this form of imbalance, you could be conquered. Only people who are operating with the brain on all cylinders combining the left and right brain hemispheres and using it toward their highest potential, which is what the middle path really is, okay, then you're going to be able to be manipulated, deceived, and ultimately conquered and enslaved. Chronic right brain imbalance works the exact opposite way. It's the exact opposite form of mind control. So the symptoms of this form of brain imbalance are you're naive and you'll just believe anything open to blind belief with no investigation. Somebody tells you something new with very little evidence to back it up and you accept it blindly. Too many people in, the, in that mindset, especially in the truth community, okay? It's a hallmark of religious extremism, religiosity, it has been called, a willingness to just believe dogmatically religious beliefs. Solipsism, again, you see the religion called solipsism works in both directions, left brain imbalance and right brain imbalance. People in solipsism think there's no such thing as truth, no such thing as objective knowledge. 
absolutely things exist independently of our perception in the universe, in the natural domain. It is our job as human beings to align our perceptions to the objective reality that is taking place within us and around us. I don't, this is like, this is like infant class 101 of reality detection and understanding. It's, it's a horrific sadness to me that I have to explain this to any other living human being and that there is, you have no idea the tremendous resistance to taking in even this small amount of knowledge. How many people would say, absolutely not. You're completely wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Over and over and over and over again, I hear this while the world is practically in fucking flames. And they still can't get that it's because of wrong thought. It's because of wrong perception. People acting upon inaccurate perceptions that they have come to inaccurate conclusions because they are using inaccurate methods of reasoning. And they don't can't understand that this is what's happening worldwide that is putting people into the position where they can be easily manipulated and ultimately enslaved. And they'll fight you to the death that they know. And this isn't how it really works. Fight you to the death. The ignorati, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have to build them some kind of a, a building, a, some type of a meeting house or a church of some sort. You know, it had to be really, really fucking big. I'll tell you that much. You know, it have to be a gigantic facility somewhere. So solipsism exists on both sides of the equation, left brain imbalance and right brain imbalance. Okay. No such thing as anything that's true. It's all just a matter of perception and opinion. And then of course, right brain imbalance will lead to things like unworthiness, self-loathing, drug addiction, you know, self, you know, just hating the self, you know, I'm not good enough. And then that leads people to join institutions like cults, like the government, like the police, like the military. You join a fucking cult, little boy, little girl who hates themselves, that is in a state of largely both left brain imbalance and right brain imbalance. But the willingness to join a cult is a big right brain dominance trait, right brain imbalance trait. Okay. Because you got to be already in a state of self-loathing and self-hatred to join a cult. Okay. And that's where the order followers and the police and military come in. They're in that form of imbalance as well, even though they're left brain imbalance psychopaths, many of them, most of them, almost all of them. And the form of right brain, brain imbalance will ultimately lead to people being willing to be a willing slave by choice or saying there's nothing that we can do about it. The world is headed into slavery and we can do nothing to turn it around. It's ultimately going to be destroyed. It's called a giving up, giving up and standing down mentality. Don't do anything. Take no action. Little impotent Children think like this, powerless children. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what this whole mind control dialectic is designed to put people into. That's the mindset it's designed to place you into the mindset of a powerless child. These social engineers know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing and they're doing it very efficiently and very effectively by the actual state of the world. All you got to do is take a look out your door and see what the world is really like. And you understand we're getting our asses kicked by these social engineers. And it's because people don't want to set their ego aside, admit that they were wrong, admit that they were duped, admit that they're in one form of brain imbalance or another, and then heal themselves. Go through the shadow work of healing yourself so that you can actually strengthen yourself and come out of the, the mindset of being a powerless, impotent child and actually act as an adult, as a cosmic adult in the real world to make positive, lasting change. No, people don't want to do that. They want to remain infants, cosmic infants. So this mental schism will then lead to a worldview schism. And I know this is a review for some people, but guess what? A lot of other people don't know this or they heard it and it went in one ear and out the other and they completely forgot it. Okay. In one ear, out the other. 
not paying attention, not really giving the spiritual currency of time and attention to the subject matter. Okay. And that's why that it does bear repeating to firmly nest it in the psychological understanding in the human mind. Okay. When you're in the left brain form of imbalance, your worldview starts to shift toward believing that the universe is a state of total randomness with no order to it. This is the, the universe is a grand cosmic accident, no creator, no underlying intelligence in nature. Everything happened as a complete accident. All the laws of nature just manifested that way because no answer to it. Okay. Because it just randomly happened that way. Okay. They don't even try to offer an explanation. They'll just say it's just random occurrence. Okay. As if you could throw a bunch of pieces up in the air and when they land, it's a working computer. I'm just going to take all the components of a computer, all of the raw materials that comprise a computer. I'm going to take it in a big box. I'm going to take the box, throw it up in the air. And when it lands, there's a perfectly working, uh, you know, MacBook pro, or there's a perfectly working HP envy right there. You know, imagine this. This is how people think the universe works, that there was no design, that there was no handiwork whatsoever, that the laws of nature just magically appeared from nothing, as did all matter. They think there's no such thing as spirituality, consciousness, morality, natural law, nothing, meaningless terms. I actually had someone in the freedom movement. I, I'm look, I, I, I generally, when I talk about people that I interact with on a daily basis, I don't use their names because in 99.9% .9 of the scenarios that I refer to, if I did use somebody's name, I would be horrifically embarrassing, to, embarrassing them to their peer group. And that's, that's a sad thing. I had someone at a meeting of alleged Libertarians and anarchists say to me, consciousness and spirituality are 100% meaningless terms to me. And I said, well, enjoy your slavery, man. Just enjoy it. Like, why would you be concerned that you're going into slavery at all? Why would you show up here? Why would you even be concerned that the world is degenerating into totalitarianism? Why wouldn't you just go back, kick on the fucking idiot tube and watch whatever reality show you feel like watching for the night? Why not? What would you be trying to get into any philosophical discussions about the wrongness of going into a state of totalitarianism and slavery. What would it matter? Because consciousness is meaningless to you and spirituality is meaningless to you. Well, then right and wrong obviously have to be meaningless to you as well. Truth has to be meaningless to you as well. By definition. Because they are stuck in a paradigm of science that is 100 complete outdated and wrong. And this is, again, I'll be saying it over and over again, the Newtonian paradigm of scientific materialism. Look up the primacy of matter, okay, as put forward by the Newtonian paradigm of science that is 100% provably false by modern scientific standards. And yet they still think that's the standard for science. You're not privy to the new shit, man, as the dude from the Big Lebowski would say. You're not privy to the new shit. Sorry, but I got to just say it just like that. You are, you're thinking your old rotary telephone is this, the industry standard. Okay. And, and it, again, it's because they take a tiny little bit of knowledge. They latch on to it. That's, that's dogmatism. That's religion. And this is my be all and end all. And this is my damn identity. It's my identity. You know, that's how most people think. 
People in the randomness worldview, trapped in the worldview of randomness, believe that existence has no purpose other than to continue to exist. There is not attempting to do anything, to create anything, to move toward any other preferable state of existence. No purpose other than to continue to exist. When that is actually completely scientifically disproven, we know that the universe is attempting to create more complexity and less differentiation by creating more forms. This is something that the ancient Greek philosophers and Egyptian philosophers talked about endlessly. And ultimately, the randomness worldview are the hallmarks of scientism, atheism, and totalitarianism. Every totalitarian regime that has ever existed on the face of the goddamn earth has told people these things. The universe is a cosmic accident. There's no creator. Okay, spirituality is meaningless. There's no such thing as real objective morality or natural law. Existence has no purpose except to survive. Survival is a human beings only purpose. That is what they are trying to put into the minds of the people to get them to accept total control. Absolutely 100%. That's what it leads to left brain imbalance. And that is what atheism is all about. Determinism, on the other hand, just to counterbalance this, okay, is the opposite right brain imbalance. And this is why a lot of people go into the opposite dialectic. See, folks, I, I want to reemphasize this. People see the danger of religion and then they think atheism is the preferable alternative. That's where they're getting lost. That's where they're making a big error in judgment because they're falling into the set up socially engineered dialectic of two false choices. That's why when I tell people I'm not a religionist, I don't subscribe to any religion. I think all religion needs to be destroyed. And equally, I am not an atheist. I do not accept atheism. I think that's just another religion that needs to be destroyed. People like look at me like I have, you know, 1,000 hydras growing out of my, the base of my ne neck. You know, they, they, they can't, that immediately stops someone from putting you in a box because that's what everybody wants to do. They want to do this, uh, you know, uh, a, 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 a ontological grouping in hierarchical boxes, okay, which is a, not even a right way of looking at ontology anyway, okay. But that's what everybody, when they're they're trying to figure you out, they want to get a read on you. That's what they try to do. I got to put this person in a box immediately, or then he ma he she makes no sense whatsoever to me, and I need it to rigidly make sense in my dogmatic worldview, okay. So you have to understand there is a third alternative. And in many cases, there's three, four, five, six, a thousand alternatives to the dialectic. But let's look at the right side of this dialectic. Let's continue. It's called the worldview of determinism, the opposite of pure randomness. Everything is determined. Everything is set in stone. You can't change a thing. God controls every event in all of creation. So all occurrences are obviously preordained because God is all powerful and all knowing. Free will is an illusion and does not actually exist. This is actually one you could throw on the left as well. Under randomness. A lot of people, because they've gone so into the paradigm of the primacy of matter, think that matter controls everything. And that since there's no consciousness, there can't be any free will. So you've got to see how brain imbalance, it often mirrors each other. One form of it, it often is a mirror to the other form. Okay. So just because you go in right brain imbalance doesn't mean you can't have characteristics of left brain imbalance and vice versa. Just because you go into left brain imbalance doesn't mean you can't have right brain imbalance. They work together hand in hand to systematically destroy the mind and the soul. So free will to the deterministic uh, individual, the, the worldview of determinism doesn't exist. And since God controls everything, change is impossible because it's all part of the divine plan. That You weren't really given free will. It's all an illusion. And therefore, you know, action would be meaningless because you can't change anything. You know, it's all set in stone. It's all pre-written. It's all written to occur. And these are obviously the hallmarks for anyone who's really thinking and paying attention at all of both religious extremism because this is all pure religiosity and the mindset of a slave, slave think, as I call it. One is master think, one is slave think. 
And even to call it master think is really not accurate. It's, you know, just pure left brain imbalance of believing science is the be all and end all, which leads to atheism, atheism and leads to totalitarianism. And then the opposite is a total religious nutter. So in either instance, you're not coming out with a good outcome. In either instance, you're coming away with a world that is drenched and saturated in chaos. Okay, that's what ultimately these two forms of completely brain imbalanced worldviews will ultimately lead to.